Okay, so we've talked about the types of astro, talked about what they're made out of. Let's get on to the money, the economics. Because this, this is what matters, right? This is, this is what's going to pay for everything. This is what to pay for everything. And it's going to pay for to do all of our fun things on the moon and Mars. And, and if the economics aren't in there, then no one's going to really do it. So let's go back uh, and look at this, remind people. So we have an example asteroid like Psyche or Themis that has hundreds to thousands to millions of years worth of metal than what we can do here on Earth. But what are the prices here on Earth? Okay, well, let's have a look at that. So, our asteroid has 55 million tons of platinum. Trillion tons. Trillion tons, sorry. Uh, platinum on Earth is nothing. The current rate, and that is of, as of looking up in Australian dollars, is $42,000 per kilogram. So, you're literally talking about two three billion trillion dollars worth. Now that is just at the current rate of what platinum is. And that's, I mean, all the real estate in Australia. In fact, that's enough to buy all the real estate on Earth, I think. Yeah, it would probably be close to- You could buy the Earth for that. You could probably buy the Earth for that. And, that, and that's one element from one asteroid. Of course, if you did have that much platinum down to Earth, the price of platinum is gonna crash big time. And this always becomes one of the interesting concepts in this is when we start talking about um, these estimates. So this was a, a, a policy paper where they estimated, well, what would the value be of these elements in 94 and then 2012, noting that the price of nickel has increased by about 10 in the past couple of years because we use lithium and nickel for batteries. Um, platinum is about the same. Cobalt has changed a bit. We're using a lot more of these resources. So the Demand is being driven up, and that's driven up the cost. And even in 2012 dollars, it still, you know, from this small asteroid, 86DA, was only 87 trillion. Um, pitiful dollars. But this is the issue, the supply and demand. What we're not factoring in here in a well, and this is what every economist will yell at me for, is how do we deal with this dramatic change in supply because on Earth, as you said, there's a limited amount of resources we have. There's a limited amount of rate we can dig it up. We can't really dramatic change that. We can't dive into the Earth to get it out and all of a sudden have riches. So the Earth kind of naturally controls our supply of a lot of these things for the most part. But that's not going to be an issue right to begin with. Like the very first few probes are not going to be bringing back trillions of tons. That's They're right. a small amount. So these prices are probably reasonable for your first little thing. Um, but then as you get more and more of the stuff, you're going to start forcing the price down. But then at that point, you've also put in a lot of the infrastructure to do this. That's right. So you don't need that profit return. And then you're probably driving new markets. For instance, if, if battery storage is now dirt cheap because the price of nickel is next to nothing, well, then you're going to create a new market. So the way economics start to happen now is kind of different here on Earth because you now don't just really have one Earth of resources, which has kind of been our limiting factor. And also, this is the price at the Earth's surface, whereas yes. these are delivered to space. And at space, things cost, launch costs much exactly. more. So uh, tens of thousands of dollars per kilogram just to launch things into space. So, so when you're trying to talk about that savings of doing these goals in space, it actually is more. And you know, you're talking about how much this is worth. Uh, the US debt is a little bit more than that now. But you know, even at the time, it eclipses what the debt is worth. So this is going to change a little bit how we think about the economics of asteroids. And so this is what people point to. What are we going to really gain from the economics relative to different industries? Now, a lot of people point to uh, all of those platinum group elements that we said, anything in electronics, uh, battery storage, electrical, you know, and you can make the argument, well, that's actually pretty good, right? If all of a sudden you can make, you know, essentially stop, uh, you know, hydrocarbons and fossil fuels and really make an impact on uh, the climate from resources that are not from the Earth as well. That's keeping in mind. We're not actually digging this up out of the Earth. This is coming free. Well, is that such a bad thing? A lot of people say, well, maybe not. But then we start to get into these other issues that we'll talk about in a second. So, you know, we have lots of different ways. You know, we've talked about the fuel. We've talked about using it in space. And there seems to be lots of money involved here. And this is why everyone becomes interested in it. Now, the cost to return, a lot of people point to, it's, it's essentially nothing. And this is different, right? When we've talked about the moon and Mars, it still requires a lot of relative fuel because it's still a lot of 
work to get that precious water out or that ice and melt it on an asteroid is essentially is nothing, right? So you're, you're dividing everything by hundreds of trillions. Exactly, that's right. When you're multiplying these large numbers and you're really talking about a dip, you know, you're talking about that's the moon to the Earth, if we remember earlier ago. You know, we're talking about something a lot smaller than this. And especially if we get one of these Earth crossing asteroids where we're actually relatively nearby, it's pretty much like it's our own. It's probably even easier in some cases and even on Earth, especially when we want to get into space. Because I think that's the name of the game, as you repeated. It's how do we supply this into space and potentially use it on Earth. But the economics have to be there. And I think the economics are probably there.